What's up guys, Seth here with TomorrowsFilmmakers.com, the largest online film academy in the world, and today we'll be talking about how to use your camera efficiently. It's one thing to know how to use your camera, but it's another to know how to use it with your eyes closed. And what I mean by that is, every time you go to shoot with your camera, whether it be for a client or for yourself, you should know how to use your camera like the back of your hand. Not only that, you should know what you are shooting most often and create custom shooting modes and button layouts to maximize your ability and efficiency with your camera. In this video, we'll be briefly discussing a crucial topic that no one really talks about and yet makes your life so much easier when out in the field. Now, this will be a short overview of how to use your camera efficiently, but if you wanna learn everything about mastering your camera from start to finish, you can check out our full academy at tomorrowsfilmmakers.com. With over a thousand training videos and over a hundred hours of content on every single aspect of filmmaking taught by leading professionals in the film industry, Tomorrow's Filmmakers is your one stop to learn all the skills you need to succeed. Learn the best from the best. With over 15,000 students in over 50 countries, a lifetime membership to our award-winning $800 film course is only 97 bucks. If you wanna take advantage of this crazy deal, you can check out our website in the link below and head on over to tomorrowsfilmmakers.com to learn more. So you own a camera, you know how to use it, but do you know how to use it efficiently? When people ask me the question, what's one thing you wish you did differently when starting out as a filmmaker, I almost always say, I wish I would have taken the time to customize and optimize my camera settings for my shooting preferences. And as lame as that might sound, it's something I fully regret not doing because doing so would have helped with so many aspects of shooting in the field. The importance of not only knowing your camera well, but customizing it for your needs is something I can't stress enough. When you're out in the field shooting a project, especially if it's a fast paced shoot with content that can't be repeated, like a wedding for example, being able to change camera settings on the fly and have custom shooting modes set up is something you'll never regret. I'm a travel filmmaker, so my shoots usually consist of fast paced content in environments that are sometimes hard to shoot in. This was actually one of the steps in a previous video we made, but because it's so vital, we felt the need to discuss it more in depth. Being able to quickly turn a knob and switch between 24 FPS and 120 FPS while also having the shutter speed and resolution change automatically is life changing. Or being able to adjust your ISO with a tap of a button instead of having to go through a menu and waste valuable shooting time is 100% necessary. Each camera model and brand might look and operate a little differently from one another, but most are able to be customized to the user's liking. Now let's actually get to the meat of this video. There's two main ways to customize your camera for efficiency. One is to map out as many buttons as your camera will let you. My Sony camera will allow me to customize pretty much every button on the camera body, so I make sure to set these to settings that I'll need to change on the fly, like ISO and aperture. The second way is my favorite, and that is to create custom shooting modes. Most cameras have this option, and it can be found on the top of the camera body on the circular dial. This allows you to set up fully customized shooting settings and change between them super quickly. So now, let's dive into the camera itself, and I'll show you exactly how to do this. First, let's begin with method one, mapping out buttons. Now, each camera is different, but I use a Sony a7C, so we're gonna be using that for this example. And the importance here is to map out things that you use often. So if you're going to be changing ISO a lot or aperture, whatever you're changing, map those out to your liking. So we'll be using these buttons right here on the uh, camera body. Most cameras will allow you to set it up however you want. You can usually go into your menu, find wherever in your camera to set up buttons, to customize your buttons. So here mine says custom key, so we're gonna select that and it has a little video icon beside it. So I know that's going to be custom buttons for my video settings. So we're gonna select that and here you can see I already have all of mine set up. So I have white balance, uh, zebra display, ISO, peaking display, peaking level, and auto white balance lock toggle. These are all just things that I need to use or I need to change quickly. So this way I have it all set up so I can just click a button and it changes. So on mine, you just select uh, whatever button. So as I scroll down the menu, it highlights what button on the camera body that this is. So if let's say you want this middle button right here on the dial to be ISO. See so mine is selected to ISO. You would just select it and then here you can mine gives me multiple options of what i can put it as here i just selected iso so when you're back ready to shoot if you just hit on the center button your iso will pop up and you can set it to auto or whatever number you want to set it to click the center button again and boom your iso is set same applies for anything else you've set so my white balance is this top button right here usually i keep white balance on auto but if i want to change it manually just click that top button and then I have all my custom white balances right here that I can change it for. So these are my six that I use most often. Again, white balance being this top button. And I like it like this because my hands can just stay on this part of the camera right here, unless I'm changing a shooting mode, which I'll go into in a minute. 
my hand pretty much just stays right here and I can change everything I need to super quickly while I'm shooting. So this top one is white balance, like I said, usually keep it at auto, but if I did wanna change it, it's right there. The next one down here is actually my trash button. For my camera, you can make it whatever you want. So for me, it's my zebra display. So if I wanna see what's overexposed really quick, just hit that button, I can see it and I can turn it off. Usually I don't like to shoot with zebra on because it's kind of distracting when I'm shooting. If I did want to see what's overexposed, I just hit that button really quick. Uh, my next one, like I said, is ISO. That one I use the most often and I made it the button that is most prominent, which is the center button right here. So I just hit that, change my ISO, boom, it's good to go. So these two on the side dial have to do with peaking. Uh, and this is something I actually do use quite often just to see what's in focus because I do like to shoot in manual focus a lot and I like to see what's in focus. So quickly click a button and see what's in focus is really, really Really cool so this one does peaking display so this actually turns the peaking on and off and then this one does the peaking level that is just how intense the peaking is going to show up usually I leave it at about middle because I don't want it too high or too low and then my last button down here is the auto white balance lock toggle and I like this feature a lot because that way there's a lot of movement or if your camera is catching different colors in the same setting you can lock your white balance and it will stay at whatever you set it as or whatever the auto white balance for that room should be so that's a really cool feature again you just i can just click that button and that's locked and uh, that's really quick and easy to do that so again every camera works differently this is how to do it on mine but find how to custom map buttons on your camera make them what you want them to be what you use most often and get those set up because it is a serious game changer when you're trying to change settings quickly when you're shooting in a fast-paced environment so the second method, which is my personal favorite, is setting up custom shooting modes. And this is a life changer when you're in the field because before I knew how to do this, I had to you know, go into the menu, change my frame rate, and then change my shutter speed. And when it's fast paced shoots, you don't really have time to do this and it takes up valuable shooting time. So being able to just turn this dial right here, switch all your settings into whatever mode you want it to be in, it's life changing. So I'm gonna go into the camera, or I'm gonna show you my uh, settings or my custom shooting modes, and I'm gonna show you how to set those up okay so like I said it's on the top of your camera and it's labeled as one two three so in my camera I haven't set up uh, my first one is photography so whenever I just want to take some quick pictures switch it over boom I'm in photo mode and I have my shutter speed automatically set up manual mode my aperture is automatically set up so everything's good to go I usually just do like landscape photography stuff so this is just set up for that and then obviously when I select it and I want to change settings like if I want to change the shutter speed I can obviously just do that once I select it second mode is going into video and this is just regular 24 frames per second stuff this is just stuff for like vlogs talking what, whatever I want to shoot 24 frames per second in and then my third setting or my third custom shooting mode is for slow motion so this one is set to 60 frames per second shutter speed is uh, set to 125 everything's manual uh, aperture I keep low ISOs on auto and you can just you know set it up however you want and these custom shooting modes are pretty much available on every single camera so just follow along with me on my Sony and I'll show you how to set those up. Okay, so to set up your custom modes, you actually kind of have to work backwards. And this is how it is on my camera and it should be the same on most cameras, but you actually just set up however you want the shooting mode to be. So you set up your settings and then you go in and you actually save those to the shooting mode instead of going into your menu, selecting a shooting mode and then going into set it up. So you kind of have to work backwards a bit. First thing you're gonna do, like I said, just set up your camera however you wanna set it up. So for this example, we're going to set it up as 60 frames per second. So I'm gonna tie in the first step here because like I said in the first step, uh, we just changed all these or mapped out all these buttons to do whatever you want to do. So you can kind of uh, apply the first step here into setting up your custom shooting mode so like ISO was this middle button so I'm just gonna hit ISO real quick and then I usually like to just keep my ISO in auto just for the custom shooting modes if I have to once I select that custom shooting mode I'll manually change the ISO but again this is where step in comes into play because you can just quickly press it and then boom change your ISO so I'm just gonna put it on auto for this. So next would obviously be changing your frame rate. This setting differentiates the different shooting modes because one is 60, one is 120. So this one's gonna be 60. So you're gonna go into your menu. So you can change your resolution and frame rate, and then I can change it automatically. It just changes it to 60 frames. So I'm just gonna put it at 60 frames. So that's set up. And then now would be my shutter speed. So I don't have to go in and change it every time I select it. It's automatically changed for me. So since I'm at 60 frames, we'll go to 125. So that's set up. Uh, my aperture I like to keep as low as possible. So my lens is uh, 2.8 is as low as it'll go. So I'll keep it on 2.8. Then everything else is pretty much good. Those are the main things that change between my custom shooting modes. The frame rate, the resolution, the shutter speed, 
The aperture and ISO is pretty much the same. It just stays on auto. So once you have that, all that set up, you will go into the menu, find where to save this. For me, it's right here. It's called, it looks like this. It has these little symbols and then it has recall and memory. Mine is memory because it remembers what mode you have just set up. And then you can set that to a custom shooting mode. So hit memory. And then here you see at the top, you have one, two, and three. This is your dial. Select it to whatever number you want it to be. So let's just say you want it to be two. So you just hit two, registered, and that means it is registered to number two on your dial. So when you switch to number two, so you can see I'm on number one right now. When I switch it over to number two, boom, all the settings automatically change, and then you go out of your menu, you're back in your camera, and all the settings have changed to shoot for 60 frames per second. One of my other ones is photo mode. So if I just switch it back to one, it goes to one and then you see my shutter speed changed and then it goes into photo mode for me, switch men or hit menu and then boom, now I can take pictures. I wanna go back to video, switch the knob, select it, now you're back in video. So you can literally change shooting modes in less than five seconds. So if you're running gun, if you're shooting weddings, fast paced, whatever it is. And again, this can be found on pretty much any camera. Set up those custom shooting modes. Again, I have mine set up to 24 frames per second, 60 frames per second, and then a photo mode. That's the three that I use most often. Whatever three that you use most often, set those up. And then when you're out in the field, super easy to change those. Taking the time to follow these two methods and customize your camera settings for maximum efficiency is time well spent. There's nothing worse than getting out in the field and missing a crucial shot because it took too long to change your camera settings. Map out your buttons, create custom shooting modes, and eventually you'll literally be able to change multiple settings with your eyes closed. If you'd like to learn even more about how to master your camera, you can check out our full course at tomorrowsfilmmakers.com. We have over a thousand training videos and over a hundred hours of content on every single filmmaking subject that you can imagine. If you'd like to join over 15,000 other filmmakers just like you, pursue their dreams and learn all about film, click the link below and sign up for our full academy for 90% off. A lifetime membership to our award-winning $800 film course for only 97 bucks. So click the link in the description and head on over to tomorrowsfilmmakers.com to learn all the skills that you need to succeed.